question is, is social justice the church's responsibility? And how do we show it? Our scripture lesson today um, comes to us from the prophet Micah. And in your bulletin, there are three scripture lessons, and I'm going to reference um, Amos and Matthew as well later, um, but that's just too much for us to read together at one time. So you can you can keep your bulletin open so that you'll have those later. But you can open your bulletin. Micah is found in there. You can read along on the screen if you have your own Bibles. Micah is hard to find, Lindsay, um, because it's like, you got it right there? Nice. <laughs> to like flip through a few different times because it likes to stick. It's one of those sm- minor prophets and so it sort of sticks together. That's nice. There's a Baptist child right here. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, some more on the end of the row. Yeah. <clears throat> But um, Micah is in the Old Testament, and it does like to stick together. Like there's this, this is the New Testament, and then Micah is sort of right there. Um, You can also um, just take a moment to take a deep breath and focus on the cross. Maybe close your eyes to hear God's word today. This is Micah chapter 6, beginning at verse 6. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The prophet says, he has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of God for the people of God, and because of it, we can give thanks to our God. Is social justice the church's responsibility? Yes. I can answer that one. Yes. (laughs) For thousands. Thousands of years, the people of God have been called to justice. We could even see this from really the very beginning. If you remember the story of the brothers Cain and Abel, so the children of Adam and Eve, right? The story of Cain and Abel, the brothers come together and they give an offering to God. And one gives an offering of grain and fruit and things that they have... um, Uh, toiled over and one gives an offering of animals and for some unknown reason because the scripture doesn't tell us why but God likes Abel's offering better than Cain's and Cain is very upset and in his rage and anger he kills his brother Abel and then one day God comes to Cain and says where is your brother and Cain's response is, am I my brother's keeper? Maybe even from the very beginning, we have been called to keep one another. If you're not going to stretch that far with the Cain and Abel story, we at least get it from the prophets, from Micah, from the prophet Amos. And if you want to open your bulletin to that scripture lesson from Amos, Amos also tells us of God's call for justice. This is in Amos chapter 5. God says, I hate, I despise your festivals. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Just a few chapters earlier in the book of Amos, we see how people were treating one another. Amos says they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. They trample on the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and they push the afflicted out of the way. Amos says the people are are trying to be righteous. They're, They're giving all of these offerings to God and God sees what they are doing. They are treating their brothers and sisters like dirt. They are even pushing them into the dust of the earth. They are pushing the afflicted away. 
And so what does God want instead of offerings, instead of songs, instead of worship in this case? God wants justice to roll down like waters, righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Offering is not enough. Being pious is not enough. Righteousness is not enough. And Jesus even tells us this in the Gospel of Matthew. This is not just an Old Testament idea. Jesus brings it into the new. Jesus says in Matthew 23, that's also found in your bulletin, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel. It's an interesting image there, right? Jesus even says, you are, you are tithing, and, and he says, you're tithing a little bit of your herbs, some mint and some cumin, some dill. Now, I know dill likes to grow prolifically, but even then, 10% of your dill, it's not very much, but you are neglecting the weightier matters, justice and mercy and faith. Jesus' first sermon was about the poor and the oppressed. In Luke chapter 4, we read that when Jesus came to Nazareth, he'd been, uh, where he'd been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. This was his custom. He stood up and he read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of of the Lord's favor. And he rolls the scroll back up and he gives it back to the attendant and he says to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. I have come to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. Social justice is the responsibility of the followers of God, and it has been for thousands of years, if not from our very beginning. But in our society, I don't think that we have forgotten Scripture, but we have made these words about justice political, haven't we? Several years ago, long before I had children, I, I went to a, a seminar on stewardship. It was something that the Holston Conference was sponsoring. And so there's just a, a small group of us that got to go to this thing to learn from, from a, um, a great um, theologian of money. <laughs> and I remember we actually were at um, uh, the Dancing Bear and we were sitting around in their big conference area. And the presenter said, all right, I want you to name all of the scriptures that you can think of about money. You're sort of going around the room, and I got really excited because I had, I thought, the best answer on what is the best scripture on money. And so I raised my hand, and I said, Acts 4.32. All the believers, oh, this, sorry. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. It's like, I'm going to win, right? And the presenter looked at me and he said, you must be a Democrat. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was a good follower of Jesus. I thought I was paying attention to what the church was. I didn't know that Acts 4.32 was a political statement. <laughs> This is how the early church began, sharing everything, taking care of those in need. They're also in Acts chapter 2, the story of the early church is this. All who believed were together and held all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. That is, that is how the church began. <laughs> That's not a political statement. It shouldn't define who I might vote for. It should define all of us. Our society has turned justice, social justice, into a political issue. But this is how we have always been called to function. 
to share what we have, to meet the needs of others, to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is what the prophet Micah says is required of us, not just what we ought to do or what we could do or a suggestion of how to live, but this is what is required. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. When I was um, preparing for this sermon, I was reading some articles about social justice, and I remember a few years ago, this became a big heightened political issue then, and people were talking about there are certain groups in the church that um, look at all of the social justice scriptures, and they're misinterpreting things, and, and there's others that look at biblical justice. And I, I read through those articles again, and I don't see a difference. <laughs> There is, there is one, one little tag that social justice wants the government to do the work. But that's part of how we are. It's part of how our country is set up. It's part of how the world is set up. And we are part of those systems. And so social justice, justice, biblical justice is the responsibility of the church because that is who we are called to be. But our responsibility as followers of Jesus Christ is to make that work in every part of our world, right? Not just within the church. Because if you come in these walls and you are hungry, I'm going to feed you. But I... I can only feed you today. I can feed you again on Thursday. <laughs> but I don't, I don't have the ability to feed you every day. But all of us do. We all do together. I've said numerous times to people, um, I cannot do what we do on Thursday night at Welcome Table by myself. I've gotten to about 40 people. I can feed 40 people and not keel over. But 120, 200 people, I, I can't do that by myself. I don't, I don't know the food math to be able to do that by myself because 40 to 200 is exponential. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's not like two chicken tenders per person. Like you can't do it that way when you get up to those numbers. I cannot do that by myself. I cannot change hunger in this community by myself. I don't have those resources. I had somebody late Thursday evening ask for two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and some water. They sent it on a text message because they were hungry. And they asked for a specific place, and so I was trying to do that. I just said, to the market. So I went down to all the markets on this street because I didn't know where else they were talking about. And nobody had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I spent an exorbitant amount of money on a tiny little thing of peanut butter and a little thing of jelly and some questionable bread. <laughs> because I, I had peanut butter at home, and I had bread, and I had jelly at home, but I didn't have any bread. <laughs> I couldn't even... I couldn't even make it by myself. But instead of two sandwiches, maybe I gave them eight. But that was Thursday. And I can guarantee there's no peanut butter left. And the next time I can buy peanut butter, I can make some chicken noodle soup, or I can do one thing that will help that day, maybe a little leftovers for the next but I cannot help all the hungry people in our community by myself. And you cannot help all the hungry people in our community by yourself. And so we have to do it as the church. That's the only way we're going to make a difference in the world is doing it together. And it's the thing that we've been called to do from our very beginning. Required to do, not just called, not just told, but required. As justice and mercy and kindness and love. 
So is social justice the church's responsibility? Yes, it is. And how do we show it? We have to show it not just here in this place, but in all aspects of our life. We do it together. And we are spurred on together. And sometimes what we do is as individuals, but it is upheld by the church. But we do more to make a bigger difference for a longer amount of time as the church. Because by myself, I can only make eight sandwiches. But together, we can feed people. And their hunger will be staved off a little longer so that they can do the things that they need to do and are called to do and want to do. Social justice is the responsibility of the church and it has been for people of faith from our very beginning. It is not political. It is who we are. It is who we are called to be. Amen.